Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today it's Saturday the 25th of March and I just thought I'd talk to you about our calves here. We bought these in earlier on last year and they were calves I was feeding them off the bucket with milk if you remember. Very soon they'll be going out to the um, marshes down to the broads and that's when they're going to hopefully put on a lot of flesh. They're six months now so we've got another six months to go after this. They'll be then be 12 months and then after that another six months and then they'll be ready to go. Um, we normally buy them in young at around about £350 a calf and we take them all the way up to about 18 months and then they get sold for around about a thousand pound a head to twelve hundred pound a head depending on what the prices are doing um, so it's just something which i do on the side with the rest of the farm and i enjoy doing them and i'll have another batch in quite soon but a lot of you guys have been asking about it and it's quite a good way to get into farming by rearing calves basically this one here is bilbo that's bilbs and uh as long as you've got some buildings whether you can rent some buildings off a farmer or something like that and then house some calves yourself and that, that's one way to do it i noticed Coop, cooper caleb started to buy calves now and rear them to try and get more into farming um there is one trick with calves and that is that a lot of people will go out and buy any old calves and they'll just kind of bulk feed them dairy cross calves a lot of the time which is what a lot of these are however these are hand-picked uh, continental cross although we have got hereford cross and some aberdeen angus crosses which are for waitrose and mns the reason why we try and hand pick all of our calves is to try and pick the best so out of a group of 100 calves we might only pick about five because we want to be buying calves with a good frame on them which can hopefully one day turn into some beef basically so that's sort of the idea around it it's not a five minute job it does take a long long time to get into it um, but it is one way to get into farming these days because farming is really really difficult as i'm sure a lot of you guys know uh, arable farming is more or less sewn up in a bag there's so many people out there now with big kit you know millions and millions of pounds of kit huge combines arable farming really really difficult um livestock farming is probably one of the last ways you can live the dream basically um but you've got to know what you're doing and you've got to play the long game with them um so yeah this is one batch um, and then i'm buying another batch very soon yeah just sort of give you an update and they're six months old now and they'll be going out in may a little bit later than the rest of the herd which is over there in that building they'll be going out in uh, april april the first hopefully so these will be going out a bit later and whilst i'm out on the farm this is a stick i cut a little while ago hazel branch stick and always have a good stick if you would livestock I cut some straight ones i try and find them in the winter and then i sort of dry them out in the summertime um so yeah always have a good stick with some livestock and as we've been using up quite a bit of straw recently, I need to get some more bales, but unfortunately, one of them's broken there, so that's gonna be picked up with a squeeze. But uh, I'll have to use a twin spike today because the squeeze is in another shed behind a load of cattle. Can you do it in one? Yes, you can. Tidied up the yard a little bit over the weekend. That's what I've been spending some time doing. And we're really getting there now, trying to tidy the place up for later on and when we make some more silage for feeding to the cattle. And uh, that's what we're heading towards, making more silage, trying to make more bales. And I've got a machine which we'll hopefully invest in as well, which we'll have a look at on Monday to go on the 6R to try and make some more silage. So picking up these twin spikes can be a little bit of a... <laughs> challenge with the camera in my hand but we've got there and it's becoming a bit of a bog this bit as you can see need to put some road plantings down there a bit of crushed concrete need to get two bales from here Let's see if we can get them that's the one thing in this shed we could do with is some lights but we've had some old bulb lights which have all blown or we've smashed them out the roof. <laughs> come on, come on, you two. Are you gonna come with me today or are you gonna be a pain to get on? Please. Well, we've got them, but not in the way. <laughs> not in the way I intended. Uh, that's the trouble. You gotta have the side squeeze when you get these out, sorry. Not the, not the twin spike, but anyway. You need the right tools for the job. For the job. There we go. Take that, thank you. Now I'll show you what I do here. I always put the bale up, drop it down, 
and then we'll just move it into position now with the twin spike. I sort of capture the bale between the spikes like that and then we'll do a quick turn as we come in. And someone's left the wheelbarrow out. New wheelbarrow I bought from the Doe Show, that one. Try not to run the wheelbarrow over. And that is one straw bale in there. Good thing about the 630, I did measure up the 635, the much larger Manitou, and I couldn't get it in this shed for the, to feed the horses, so I think we'll end up with the 630 115, which is the same model as this, but with a little bit more horsepower and a slightly different hydraulic pump on it. But I'd still go for the Vario, I'd go for the Elite model as well, which is what this one is, with all the options ticked, except the boom lights, could do with some boom lights. I'm going to use this in the Teagle tomorrow. Alright, so we've put the bale of straw in the livery yard. Now I've got to go and get a bale of silage. But I don't want a rotten bale, I want some good bales. We won't pick up any of the bales which I bought in because some of those have been a bit funny. Um, most of the ones at the back from the broads you'll see here have been really, really good. Uh, let's have a look, what's this one here? I love the twin spikes, you can just drive into the bale and then flick it up and you've got it. Whereas with my muck grab, it takes a little bit more to get the bale on. Same with the buck rake as well. Alrighty. Sometimes in the winter, if we're really busy with the tally handler, I'll use the front loader. Um, haven't used, haven't had the front loader on for ages actually. Um, it'll probably come on again maybe this summer for the first time for stacking silage, cutting a few bales. Got a new, um, well, I say new, got one handed tracker, which I use for the bales now sometimes. Cracking blade on it, it's uh, serrated so you don't have to sharpen it too much. Self sharpening. Razor, razor sharp, just what you want. Lovely bale, lovely. We've been doing just the normal stuff today, feeding everything. Um, we've got nothing carving at the moment, so uh, nothing's carved since I last said uh, that we had that Belgian blue calf. Still waiting on 12 more to carve now, which is gonna take a little bit of time. I've just come out here to the uh, to where we got the cattle, and uh, this was some land which we landscaped earlier on in the year, and it still hasn't dried out yet, unfortunately. It's just been a bit too wet. Uh, if you see there, that's why I was thinking of putting some Lego blocks in, just along this side, like a, a Lego wall, uh, portable, portable blocks. And this is what we're supposed to be planting very soon with some grass or some wild bird mixes. Uh, might put some like little um, pollen mix in here so you get some daisies growing, flowers, that sort of thing. And then if you look further on, um, there's our lake. That's actually uh, dug out quite a long time ago, many, many years ago. You see there's the farm geese down there and they're uh, hanging out with some oyster catchers. Um, so this sort of the idea was to put the, a shepherd's hut here, as a lot of you guys know. So you've got the kind of the lake, you've got the cows, the farm, and this area here was, it needs to be planted, but it's still really, really wet because it's it's not dried up yet. You see, look at this, not not yet ready. Um, yeah, the idea was that you guys could, the subscribers could come over and spend the night in my shepherd's hut, which I'm building with David from Essex, who's a carpenter. I'll give you an up, update on that pretty soon. You can see here, we've got the sun going down, you got the lake, you got the cattle, the farm. We'll have the new shed up there hopefully uh, next year or the end of this year. The, well, the wilderness, the wildlife, and I, I kind of wanted a farm theme and uh, a bit of a Lord of the Rings theme as well for any token fans. So that, that was sort of the idea behind it all really. And I think if you look, you know, there, it's a lovely, lovely view. And it's just some, a nice part of the world which hopefully people will um, will enjoy. And it would be something, you know, to do with farming as well in, in regards to diversification. So it's just something different which we can do um, on the side 
with farming because farming you know no one knows what's going to happen with it in the next 10 years um, there's so many issues especially with the cost of fertilizer and the fact that the government wants to import all of our food so i don't know what's going to happen with the actual farming um, i think it will move more and more towards the environment and um, you've got to be positive and do other things as well as the farm as well and this is just sort of another string to the bow which we can do to try and secure the future of the farm basically so yeah welcome to norfolk um, i hope if you've been subscribing you're enjoying all the content and uh, if you're new to the channel i'll try and explain what what goes on on the farm as much as i can and uh yeah look forward to seeing you in the shepherd's hut once it once it comes up once it's delivered so uh, we'll go and see it being built first and then uh, yeah we'll go from there so uh, with that the sun's going down and uh yeah before long it'll be summer thanks for watching this lovely evening yeah, and i'll catch you in the next one click here to subscribe to the channel and click here to watch another ollie's farm video